Welcome back to The Shed. We're going to discuss the almost medieval argument surrounding stainless steel bolts and aluminium engine castings. Yesterday I watched a YouTuber prepare to replace his engine bolts with stainless ones. The engine block is aluminium, so does this matter? Various people commented quickly warning him of his impending doom. Others did agree that his shiny new bolts would indeed look better and he should gain at least another 5 horsepower. To understand and answer that question, you have to look at it in a bit more detail than a quick comment on YouTube. What is galvanic corrosion? Why should it affect my shiny new bolts? Why should I care? Well, galvanic corrosion is also commonly termed as a bimetallic, bimetallic corrosion. It's an electrochemical process. That is to say, that it occurs as a result of the flow of a very small electric current, usually between two dissimilar metals. I'll tell you why they're dissimilar shortly, which causes the more anodic of the two metals, in this case aluminium, to corrode, and the more noble or cathodic metal theoretically being unaffected. Um, Stainless steel and aluminium are pretty far apart in the galvanic series of metals with aluminium at the anodic or corroded end and this basically means that in the presence of an electrolyte, humidity, water, salt water etc this stainless bolt will be acting as a cathode pulling the electrons from the anode or the aluminium threads in this instance and causing them to corrode. Stainless, of course, being the more noble. The name is Spark. If we don't battle to the death, they will kill us both. Meaning it can, theoretically, uh, is less likely to corrode. I will put up the uh, galvanic series of metals chart just so that you can understand what I'm talking about in terms of more noble and less noble. Stainless steel is very vulnerable to crevice corrosion, which can happen when the fastener is cut off from oxygen, for example, if the threads should become immersed in oil. Stainless steel needs oxygen to maintain its passive surface layer. Protection against crevice corrosion usually involves either selecting a more corrosion resistant grade of stainless or using sealants to keep out the corrosive agent. I would think that you can pretty much count on the surface layers of um, the stainless fastener um, becoming damaged as the fastener is torqued up. Um, for stainless steel, the most immediate issue though is galling. Stainless steel typically contains a lot of suspended carbides, for example, very hard particles that exist on the surface in what we call a soft matrix. This means that stainless threads are prone to galling and seizing. This is then further exaggerated um, with aluminium, which is a relatively soft metal, but with, the hard, but with hard surface oxides. Also, the difference in hardness between the stainless and the aluminium means there is a big risk of deforming aluminium threads. And although galling is a specific issue with stainless and stainless threads, um, the relative softness of aluminium alloys means that lubrication is important, even if you don't get actual galling per se. So, with stainless, never go in dry. Even if the thread doesn't actually seize, um, aluminium threads have a much lower load capacity than steel, uh, than steel ones, so so lubrication will reduce the risk of tearing out the threads before the required torque is reached. As the applied torque is a function of friction between the threads, as well as the tension in the fastener, which we've described in an earlier video, screw threads do tend to have a very small area of contact between the mating surfaces. Um, and what can happen is that this creates local high pressure areas um, which strip off the surface oxide basically and effectively allow the two metal surfaces to weld to each other. Um, 
Essentially, stainless steel is steel with additives, and these additives are such that a layer of chromium oxide forms on the surface, hence the word stainless. But once that surface layer has formed, um, the steel is known as, for example, grade 316 passive. Otherwise, it's grade 316 active. Technically, grade 316 shouldn't rust. If it does, it means the passive layer has broken down. Now, um, all of that is a lot of scientific but not very helpful information. After all, how often do you actually need to change the bolts that you're about to insert? If they hold your carbs in place or your, or your exhaust headers in place, then not that often. I don't change my exhaust headers every week. I'm sure you don't either. Are the bolts even in a position that the shiny stainless steel heads can be seen? What purpose are they serving? And what are you gaining from it? Or are they just in place that they are? you are in hope that the keenest of eyes may comment upon their most noble status over a biker cafe coffee? Um, if you absolutely have to use two metals that are distant noble cousins, such as aluminium and stainless steel, then be sure to coat the stainless in something like uh, Duralec or Tef gel, which is a pretty expensive anti-corrosive gel that prevents um, electrolytic uh, corrosion between the two dissimilar metals. Typically used for stainless fitting into or onto aluminium. It's actually a marine based gel because yes you guessed it, salt water is to corrosion what petrol is to your barbecue. What? No, no, no. <laughs> so, in conclusion, if you feel the need to replace your bolts with shiny expensive bolts, just follow some simple rules. Buy a decent grade of stainless steel bolt. Nothing cheap and make sure it's passive. Don't over tighten and risk damaging the threads. Remember, this is stainless steel into aluminium. And always apply some anti-corrosive gel. Corrosion is going to happen anyway with all bolts over time. But this corrosion can be reduced. So is stainless steel safe to use in an aluminium block? Yes, it is, if it's used properly. Would I? Probably not. I'm way too tight and I don't need the extra horsepower. Thanks for watching. See you soon.